Welcome back to me fucking ranting. And, uh, yeah, I, I hate WeWeb. Um, I was about to say that WeWeb is the greatest platform for no code, and, uh, it's not. I wish I knew front end. I wish I wrote this in pure code, even though it would take longer. I wouldn't be so pissed off right now. So, let's just, let's just take a look at the, the primary problem that's, that's occurring right now. So, if we head to my, um, setup page, so, th after someone installs my app, they're gonna head to this setup page, and on this page, oh, it worked, dude, fuck. Holy shit, I might scrap this video. No, 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 I still have something to say. So basically, this wasn't loading in at all. And uh, we, can actually, we can actually reproduce this issue if we just remove this domain. So I'll disable that and I'll disable that. And so then let's come back here and it might not work now because yeah so okay perfect perfect as in fuck this dude so it's not showing the stripe payment form and basically there's a few things that go into this so if we go to the layout we can see we have a form here and then we have our stripe element this is pulling the client secret out of the payment intent that we're generating every single time we run it hopefully this isn't sensitive i'm sure it is because it's a secret just don't, uh, just don't kill me, you know? So anyways, we're pulling this in. That's done correctly. As we just saw, it's, it's working. That's good. So we know it's legit working. Um, and then we can also look at the, what the fuck? What am I looking at? So this is what runs when the page loads and it's a serverless function on my own server where I'm generating that, uh, that payment intent, which is like a way for Stripe to set up a charge before it actually happens. It's kind of weird. You don't realize, but before a charge occurs, they create a payment intent and then that's tied to a customer. And then when that customer checks out, then it's fulfilled. So anyways, this is firing properly. Um, when I test it out, it seems to be working fine, but it wasn't rendering the form and I didn't fucking know why. And so I had to open the logs and keep in mind, if I go to publish this and view it in my own browser, it's gonna take forever to publish. It literally takes, I think, like five minutes and I'm just gonna twiddle my thumbs? Like, it's fucking annoying. So, um, I was trying to check the logs to figure out like what's going wrong and it doesn't say, there's no error to say, oh, it's not working um, in the UI. You literally have to figure it out. And so I was, I was looking at this and I see this warning that says, you're not registered with the verified domain. Please follow this. This is the first time I saw it and I was like, Oh, I guess that could be a reason, but it works in the editor and I haven't added the editor domain. And so anyways, when you open this, then it brings you to this page where you can just add a domain and then um, get it working. But the thing is, let's let's do this, all right? Stellar.app um, and then, yeah, that's gonna be the domain. And then to add Apple Pay, which is a great feature to have, I need to upload a file to uh, this location. So we have the file right here, and then we have to upload it to this location on my domain for it to be verified, all right? Now let's go over to WeWeb, and uh, I've already created a page for this, but, but let's just try Let's create a page, let's call it verification. Um, well, I guess it's already used, verify. And I try to paste in that URL and it says, no, no, you can't have that. You can't use slashes. You can't create a subpath using this. They don't allow that. They literally don't allow like a subpath. And I mean, it's just fucked up. Like you can't even include a period, right? It says, yeah, you can't include the period, but they, which they want. So I was like, all right, I'll just add a verification page. I'll have a Cloudflare redirect. You know, thankfully I'm using like Cloudflare so it's easy to create a redirect from one page to the other. And then I try to add um, file. Dude, what the fuck is going on here? Because if I go, this is a file upload, all right? This is not what we want. Oh shit, I didn't mean to do that. That is not what we want. So we need some way to have this file 
be displayed on this website. And as far as I can figure out, you just can't. I mean, maybe I could if I, uh, let's see, if we went to this page and then we added custom code and then perhaps I could include a link to this file. I'd have to upload it somewhere and then include like a, a, a link or, or some, some way to have it shown on the page. But then, you know, hopefully this redirect is gonna work because it's a little bit sketchy if they are asking you to put your, um, your page on it and then, holy shit, dude, let me get my thoughts. It's a little bit sketchy if they're asking you to put a file at this location and then when they try to access this location, they get redirected to a, file, to a page that isn't that. But let's just see, I mean, and it's throwing a 404 error. Like, oh, I guess I haven't published it. But dude, there's no way to upload this file. I mean, it's just workaround after workaround, problem after problem, and there's no easy way to fix it. You have to know as much about development as you would to build it yourself, and then you wouldn't get all these problems. And let me just give you one other example that just really just solidifies this whole, this whole idea. So the setup page, we're back here, and I have my Stripe um, card thing. And weirdly enough, it doesn't tell the customer how much they're, they're gonna be charged, so I put that in text. But if we go to the Stripe element and we choose this payment form, I guess it'll add another one somewhere. Where's that add it? Right here. So you define a client secret, and this has to be a payment intent. So a payment intent is what Stripes use. I already explained this, but they use it to basically declare that someone is uh, potentially going to spend money or initiate a charge. But I am building a application, as you can see here, fifty dollar bonus credit where someone will sign up and it's usage based. And for that, you need to use a setup intent, which is separate from a payment intent. And you can't add a setup intent to uh, WeWeb. You have to use the payment intent. And if you wanna embed Stripe's you know, form, it's a massive pain in the ass because they have like four different files that go into it. Normally you would literally just do like, hang on, Okay, so this is the embeddable form, and let's just say, yeah, it's gonna be, maybe we could do, well, they only have React and Next, but I think WeWeb's written in view or something like that, and then, yeah, Node works for the back end, and maybe with the HTML. So we can embed custom HTML in, um, you like how I say uh, HTML? Got that from Britain, mate. Britain, bloody hell, H. So anyways, you have an HTML embed where you can put in your HTML, but this is what they want. So first of all, you use your server to create the checkout session, and then you have this to create the, um, the, the element, and then you have a JS thing to run the checkout, whatever, and then you have this return and this, and like, at the end of the day, I mean, because you have no idea how everything works in the back end, it's gonna be extremely hard to like tie these elements together, like an HTML element, and then a JS element, and then, a, and then another one, and another one. It's just like so convoluted and confusing that it ends up being like way, it's just like not even feasible at this point. I'm like, bro, I, I'm not even gonna try this. Like, I just know it's gonna be a massive headache, and if something breaks, I'm gonna be in a fucking world of hurt. So I compromised by charging a dollar instead of zero dollars to, you know, add their card to their account. But dude, it's like, it's just so much harder than it has to be. Like, this is the thing with no code is, yeah, it's really fast to build, to scaffold out, I guess. Like if I wanna add this text element, I mean, I guess you could copy and paste in code as well. But you, you could just move things around, you can like add stuff. Getting this design set up was pretty easy. Again, you can use like no code tools that are AI and they just translate it into code. Um, that's a bit tricky, but regardless, like that, that's still faster. It, it's still faster to move things around just visually. But you always end up with a problem like this where it's just something obscure and you can't figure it out and it's gonna be a massive pain in the ass to solve or like the Stripe example with the payment form where it doesn't even tell you what the error is. 
you're always gonna run into these problems if you're doing anything not just exactly like cut and dry of what they expect you to be doing. So, dude, at this point, I'm just like, fuck. I should have just built this out in Next or React or whatever the hottest framework is because, uh, I mean, at this point, I'm like, you know, what the fuck? This is annoying as hell. Um, and I want to say one more thing about WeWeb. Dude, this is crazy, all right? So check out this little chat widget down here. Um, it's a resource center and then you can what the hell um all right so they might have fixed it but this is the little chat widget and they had like a little thing that was like contact support so i was having this problem with the thing and i wanted to be able to use like a payment uh setup instead of a payment intent and i asked support that i was like um Shit, where did I, where's my message? But I was like, basically, hey, would it be possible to use a setup intent? I'm not really sure. And then this is what they sent me. Everything you can do with the Stripe plugin is here, which is fair enough, fair enough. That is a, this is a full answer that is complete. Um, it does answer the question. I mean, everything is here, so it should be findable. But what the fuck kind of request, is, what kind of answer is that? Everything you can do is here. And that's your customer support. And then, you know, like, obviously I've read through this like five times and I've watched it and I'm like, well, I guess you can. And yeah, thanks for the reply. I was at this point, I was like, what the fuck, dude? This support is crazy. Yeah, I read through that page, obviously. Uh, just wondering how I might mention the, might achieve the aforementioned, which in my way is a better way to slight someone than saying, as previously mentioned, I was like, I already said it, I answered my question, and then I was like, how could I do it otherwise? I mean, seriously, like, I'm just curious. And look what he said, I can't help you with that. You can try asking the community, and as described on our, look at this, look at this, this phrasing. As described on our pricing page, support is only available for business and partner plans. Oh, oh, thank you so much for, for, for making me aware that I have to pay, I'm spending $50 a month, what plan? Business and partner? Oh, oh the workspace, okay. So $59 per seat, I'm spending 50 bucks a month right now, so I have to spend an additional 60 to get support? And they're gonna be, it's gonna be this guy? Like passive aggressive, like two sentence responses? And yeah, he says, okay, don't fucking ask questions. And it's weird because it, it said that right here. They might have fixed that. But, dude, I'm just like, bro, if I'm not going to get any support, I mean, when you come across something, and what I was saying earlier, like, the cut and dry solutions, it will work for. If, if I just had a basic SaaS where I'm charging $10, $20, $50 $50 a month, and people just come on and they pay, that's great. It's going to work fine. But when it comes to like these more complicated things, you're always gonna hit issues because it's not the intended use case and you have to do a workaround. And at that point, I mean, you might as well just fucking figure out front end. It can't be that hard. It is fucking a lot of boilerplate. It's pretty intimidating, but you know, at this point I'm just like, dude, fuck. Like, this is so annoying. So anyways, that's my entire rant on why you might want to consider learning front end for your next projects. I mean, I, I'm really interested in looking into like um, Locify V0 uh, .dev, I think, by Vercel, which is like a image to code generator or text to code generator for front end. There's a lot of these kind of fledgling apps and, and from what I can tell, none of them are really perfect. It's not like you just have a perfect workflow, just text to, to design. Um, but yeah, I mean, like a, a tool like that would just revolutionize things and it would mean you wouldn't have to deal with all these problems. And yeah, so another thing is, I mean, this is a little bit unrelated, but if you're looking at like a, a web app um, built with Next, Next.js, they have this really cool feature where this sidebar would be part of the layout and then this middle part would be the page. And so the sidebar, it's like conditional pre-rendering or something like that. So 
this part of the page is legit like rendered when you click on it, but the rest of the page stays the same because you're changing you know, only the middle part. So if we were to go to usage, then we would see like the sidebar would stay the same, but the, the middle would reload, but that's not how it works. The whole page reloads, so it's just not as smooth. I mean, obviously you don't come to no code expecting to build like the smoothest app or whatever, but dude, yeah, I mean, the compromises are almost just not worth it. I'm at that point where I'm like, I've already built everything, so obviously I'm just gonna launch it, um, and now it's working. But again, like I can't, I can't use. Uh... Oh. oh, good thing it's on test. Um, but I can't verify this. I mean, it's just not, it's just not gonna work. And then, yeah, so I can't use Apple Pay, which it's not the end of the world, but still, like, fuck me in the ass. And then. One last thing, just to really round this out, is uh, if you're using like a tool like you know next like Next.js, like actual code, or or most more advanced tools are going to have a staging environment, so you can still deploy it to like your domain or a subdomain, but it's just going to be staged. So like it's not what users see; it's like what you can see while you're building it, and you need that in order to like test a lot of functionalities that have to happen in on the actual domain. But if you go publish, so I'm paying $50 a month, staging is extra. I don't even, how much extra is it? Staging, versioning, okay. 180, that's more than three times what I pay right now. And I mean, just like, it's just crazy, dude. I would, yeah, it's just crazy. I mean, it's just insane. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I mean, if you've watched this long, hopefully you are uh, warned. I'm not saying don't use no code, but I am saying I'm fucking pissed. <laughs> All right, see you in the next video.